Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall, how are you today, sir? Doing fantastic. How are you? uh, I'm good. I I see, uh, you know, yet again, we've, we've been thematic. Uh, you have a lovely image, one of my favorite images of teamwork, uh, the baton handoff during a relay race, uh, has to happen. If that doesn't go well, doesn't matter how fast you run, you have to get that baton handoff, right. Um, and I, I'd like to say I'm thematic too today, Mike, because I'm wearing a red flannel shirt at Christmas time. So you're welcome. Thank I you. didn't, I didn't know that it was flannel. I knew that it was red and <laughs> In the holiday spirit, but the flannel just adds oh, yeah. extra degree of, of Santa winteriness to, right. the whole, to the whole thing. Yeah, and so yeah, we've got the baton. Uh, yeah, yeah, and in this case, uh, today we're talking about the passing the leadership baton, uh, you know, from a, from a, a team member, uh, you know, that's going to move up into a leadership position. And, and right. so, and we're very excited because we, you know, this was all prompted uh, from a from a listener, uh, a fan, uh, dare I say, uh, <laughs> that that sent us uh, an opportunity that they're struggling with, or, or that yeah. they need some insight around. So, so yeah, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> As am I. And let, let me read a little excerpt from the uh, from the uh, letter to the editor, so to speak. Um, basically, they're they're looking for at at this particular company some resources on remaining professional. When you're a manager in training, when you're getting that baton handoff to uh, leading a team that you used to be a part of. Um, and and in, in this particular scenario, uh, sometimes uh, that team uh, can really display high levels of emotion. Uh, they can have behaviors that uh, appear very disrespectful of leadership. And so that transition from coworker of those people to boss is hard for for anyone, you know, it's, it's something that everybody has struggled with over the years that's been promoted into that kind of a role. Um, and it's, it's hard, especially in this situation, because there are some behaviors that, that are, are sort of uh, counter to what, what they're trying to accomplish as a team where, where they're doing lots of baton handoffs during the day. Um, now that, so I'll, I'll give the one more specific here. The, the, uh, the letter writer says, I would like a list of rebuttals to someone who becomes emotionally charged so so we've got the context there you you're you're on a team that has a lot of uh, emotional uh, high high levels of emotional displays you're now managing that team you're a manager in training managing that team and uh, they're specifically asking for a list of rebuttals to someone who becomes emotionally charged so right that's the uh, prompt mike and i like the prompt however i think maybe we should rephrase it uh, okay. or, or from my understanding, right, because because when I hear rebuttals, what I hear is snappy comebacks. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they're going to say, Mike, I want a snappy comeback. Yeah, yeah, I want, yeah, yeah. So they're highly emotionally charged. I need some some snappy comebacks. Some zingers. Uh, yeah, I'm going to rebut their, uh, their, <laughs> their emotions. And, and you and I, uh, we've done this long enough to know that a snappy comeback, a rebuttal is... is probably not the tool that we should lead with uh, in these situations. And so uh, there are other ways to do this. The, the rebuttal or the, 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 the good phrase, uh, right? The snappy comeback, whatever you might call it. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like an easy answer, uh, but for this, there is no, there's not an easy answer, uh, but there are certain things that you can do uh, to move this to a point where uh, where we can have a constructive, positive, right. collaborative conversation about what to do about the the, the situation that, that that's been raised. So, with that being said, we should go ahead and set the tone, set the stage here of of what we're going to try to walk through uh, in this uh, particular episode. Um, it, it goes back to the phrase that Marshall Goldsmith made famous, which is "What got you here won't get you there." That's the the name of his uh, best selling book. What got you here? to where you were a high performing member of this team will not get you there to where you are managing that team. Mm-hmm. Because whatever that role is has its own skill set. 
Now you're in a management position that has its own skill set. It's a different skill set. You're not doing the work anymore. You're getting other people to be inspired to do the work. So that's that's got to be the context for everything we're about to talk about. We want to walk you through in this episode uh, sort of the things that are under your control as the manager in handling behavior that is um, that is not team oriented. And we're going to kind of walk through a spectrum of responses uh, that that you might have. Um, and we're but we're going to return to this concept uh, before we wrap up of you know now that you are managing a team, um, you know what what makes it different? What what makes what's the the context there that makes it different? Uh, that uh, needs to be a part of your thinking as you decide how you're going to respond uh, to these uh, these moments. Yeah, and just so we're clear, like you were a member of the team, and now you've been elevated to the leadership of that same team. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, you haven't been transferred to a different department. You were you were uh, you were uh, with this peer with your peers, and now you're leading your peers, and right. that brings with it. Some unique challenges, but also uh, some opportunities uh, to leapfrog ahead faster than if they brought in a leader from the outside. So we'll talk about some of those uh, neat opportunities as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, all right, let's let's start talking about the spectrum because there are there are really um, there there are there are very few things you can do to uh, change other people. This is something I've noticed. Um, they, I, I don't have control over other people's responses, emotional or otherwise. I do have some control over how I choose to respond to those people. You know, instead of react, I can thoughtfully respond to those people. So uh, this, this is my thinking, Mike, and I, you know, I, I think uh, there are probably different schools of thought. But I might start, if, if I wanted to put it on a spectrum, I might start all the way down here uh, on, on the uh, lowest level as uh, just making an observation about the fact that I think I'm sensing something going on here. So, so uh, I've, I've certainly done this as a coach uh, with uh, maybe a, a client I'm working with who hasn't done any of the work that they said they were going to do. And I'll use that as an example. You know, um, I don't really need to say much more than to say, you know, we've had three sessions and three sessions in a row, you haven't done any of the uh, commitments that you said you would do. And then I'm just going to shut up and let a whole lot of silence get super awkward there for that other person Mm -hmm. and give them a chance to go, well, here's what's going on. And and then, then I'll get the story. Um, So I've certainly seen managers do the same thing. Just make an observation about what you are noticing and let it sit there so that the other person gets uh, gets a chance to respond. Thoughts on that? No, I love that. And and yeah, you 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 often see, and we often do. So 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 tell me what's what's going on here. Right. I, I know that you're upset. I can see that that, that you're frustrated. You know, you know, try to you know see if you're if if you can talk about the emotion that's currently going on. And then yeah, so all right, so so tell me what's really going on. And so, so yeah, because a lot of times they'll, it'll present with one problem, but there's a core, you know, there's a, there's a, a core root cause that, that's going on. And, and we want to spend as less time, the least amount of time as possible talking about the surface pre- presentation and what's really eating at this person, right? What's, what's, right. what's, what's that underlying thing? So yeah, tell me what, tell me what's really going on here. So you you've already walked us into the spectrum a little bit here, right? Because you know there's one it's one thing to just make the observation and let it sit there. Now we might even have a follow up question where we're trying to engage in a dialogue here around some specific things that we'd like to know. And I think that's maybe what I would suggest here is that this is not a conversation where you're trying to uh, you know uh, uh, win it. You know, it's you're, you're not arguing. Uh, hoping to win the conversation and and they're the loser and you're the winner. This is a conversation where you're trying to find out what is going on. So thinking through, you know, what are the things I would like to know and asking questions around that. Um, You know, I I recently had this happen. uh, Some folks were preparing for a big presentation and one of the team members muttered to a couple people, this is going to be a disaster. Well. 
my suggestion to the team members that overheard that, they weren't supposed to overhear it, but they did overhear it, is somebody needed to approach that person and say, what do you mean by disaster? Mm -hmm. What are the things you're seeing that lead you to believe this will be a disaster? Um, in other words, you know, it's, it's questions we've talked about before. What do you mean by that? And how did you arrive at that conclusion? Walking this person through some of the logic of their thinking or the illogic of their thinking. You know, right. when it gets super emotional, often it can be very hard to, to separate that for somebody. So you're helping them separate out the, the parts of this uh, so that they can honestly think through what is it really that's bugging me here and you can work through to a solution. So, so in other words, a dialogue around what, what we really would like to know about what's actually happening in that person's head and what they're seeing. Right. And you raise a good point that, that a lot of times it presents because it's emotional, it, it, it presents vaguely. Right. And so we can't, we can't, we can't deal with, with, with vagueness, right? We can't fix yep. anything. We can't, we can't reach any conclusions. We can't have a really good discussion about vague. And so, so what you're talking about is that clarification. What do you mean by disaster? What do you mean by it's all effed up? <laughs> you know, right. what do you mean right. by, you know, he's right. impossible to work with, right? What do you, you know? And so, so yeah, we're going to do some clarification and then, uh, you know, a little bit of paraphrasing afterwards. All right. So if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is right and, and then give it back and then all of a sudden you go you either get yeah or no you do not understand me yeah. at all <laughs> and, and i can't remember if we did an episode about this mike but it's something you and i use from our uh, friend and mentor pamela cole uh mm -hmm. but she likes to think of the emotional responses you're you're hearing as four different categories and mm -hmm. she calls them uh, sad mad glad and scared mm -hmm. and her point there is that when the when the response is anger, when it is mad, often mad is the surface emotion. Underneath mad is scared or sad. Um, you know, I'm hurt that I got passed over for the promotion that you got, manager in training. Or um, now that you're there, I'm scared that you know my position and my uh, pay plan, et cetera, are, are going to be challenged. They don't come out and say that. They come out with the anger. But right. drilling down helps you get to that that place. Right, right. So yeah, most of the emotion presents vaguely. So yeah, we got to figure out what is what is the intensity of the emotion, and then what is uh, what is the emotion, and then ultimately right. the, the driver of that. And know that that the uh, that the rebuttal or snappy comeback here uh, probably just makes the situation work worse. Mm. Uh, as someone who's been married for thirty one years, uh, four months, six days. Um, I know that when somebody approaches me in my house, that's emotional. And if I say you need to just calm down, um, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Does it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It seems like really great advice. <laughs> it would help us, but, but I found that, yeah, having that snappy, snappy comeback, uh, tends to escalate the situation. Just, I know what you mean. Throwing yeah. that out there for yeah. other folks. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for yeah. that reminder. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no snappy comebacks there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so let's up this ante just a little bit further onto the spectrum. You know, there's observations, there's some basic questioning, there's a real dialogue, uh, trying to get to the heart of, of what this person is talking about. I don't think the, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the the first response. I think this is down the road after you've seen a pattern of behavior. But if you are seeing a pattern of behavior, then um, it's probably time for uh, what, what a famous book titled uh, A Crucial Conversation. It, it's time to really, it's, this is a high risk conversation because you know, that this is, this is gonna be an intense conversation that could go south. But the upside potential of this conversation for help, helping this person have a breakthrough and change their behavior is worth uh, going through the risk. And, uh, and we've talked about this before in, in other episodes, but the, the way I like to think of it is there are, there are different kinds of facts that you can bring to this conversation. Observations, you know, yesterday you said F this uh, in front of the whole office. Uh, you know, uh, another one might be, you know, you've been late to work every day for the last two weeks. Uh, 
fill in the blank. You know, I, I noticed that uh, when we have a staff meeting, you always talk to the person beside you and roll your eyes. They're facts. These are things that everybody and including a fly on the wall could observe are happening. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the manager can come and say, here, here are some facts. You know, your numbers are off, whatever it is. Another fact, though, and this is this is where people it, this is where it gets sensitive, but it's a fact that you feel as a manager a certain way about these observations you've made. So so um, it's not a fact to say you are completely disrespectful. It is a fact to say because of these observations, I feel like you're trying to disrespect me. Mm -hmm. In other words, that is a statement that you can own. And it is true. That is really how you feel. And that is, if you can wrap your head around that, that there are, there are facts because they're on paper, they're observations that everybody's making, and there are facts that are in your heart because that's really how you feel, that is incredibly freeing to allow you to go some places with people, um, you know, that you wouldn't normally go. You know, the, a wife saying to her husband, um, you know, you don't love me. Okay, well, yeah, I do. Uh, that now we're just going to argue about, you know, opinions about what's going on in my heart. But if you can say you haven't taken out the trash or done any cleaning or any laundry in the house for four months now, I feel like you don't love me. That's a different conversation than the than the first one where you just start throwing out accusations. So that that's the setup of the conversation to sort of walk, walk into, hey, I'd really like to dialogue about this. I really want to have a conversation so that we can get past this behavior. Um, that's that's the Mark Ramsey version of, of a crucial conversation. It, thoughts you would add to that? Yeah, no, I love that. And uh, yeah, it was uh, Secretary, Secretary of Defense William Perry talked about this. And he, he said, you always want to go into a conversation with what he called iron logic. So we're talking about emotional stuff, but we want to have iron logic, which is what you 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 talked about, that. right? Here's some yeah. here's the facts, right? Here's here's what's happened. Here's what the the causes are. Here's measurable things that have changed. Here's how I, here's how I personally interpret it, yeah, right? So this is yep. the the iron logic that's going to be the basis of the conversation. That's great. To me, one of the one of the things that 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 I found is cre incredibly helpful, whether it was it was done you know, with me or that I've done, utilized myself is, is just the question, uh, you know, are you okay? Mm. Yeah. What's Love going that. on? What's going mm. on with you? I'm worried about you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and because from our experience, we know that, that about 90% of the time, uh, when a, when a employee or team member is in a high emotional state, that it's not about work. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something going on in their life, and it's showing up in behaviors at work. Uh, yeah. With with additional stress and, and low you know low, low tolerance for other people, whatever it might be, yep. you know mistakes and, and things like that. So so the first question is is, is yeah, are you okay? I love that. And and then it, you know that silence that that follows all of a sudden. Yeah, I've been dealing with this, and now I'm, you know, I'm behind in my work and uh, blaming everybody around. You know, all of a sudden you get, you, you know, you get the, the all the stuff, yep. <laughs> right? And and managers, leaders, coaches sometimes just want to talk about work stuff, and yeah. so, and we used to think that, right? That that employees could show up at work and at the door when they walked into the office and when they walked into the building, they could leave everything that was going on in their life behind, right? Be completely compartmentalized and just worry about work. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, we've now figured out. Yeah, the, the whole person brings themselves to work. Yeah. So if they're if they're struggling with something else, it's probably going to show up at the workplace, and so. Uh, yeah, just starting off by, by let's find out what's going on in their life. Uh, and then we can start to work down what are those specific things that are going on that, that's adding to that frustration or anxiety or slowing the work down uh, that's increasing their level of, of frustration or whatever, uh, creating the emotion that we're, that's presenting yeah. at work. And, and a side benefit of that is just in the very fact that you ask the question and wait for an answer uh, demonstrates that you do actually care about this person. You are allies. You are in a baton handoff situation. It's not like you're on different teams racing against each other. 
I'm here to help you. That's that's mm -hmm. part of what I want to be here at work. So I, I love that. Um, I, I would also, you know, you mentioned the iron logic. Another thing you want to come to the conversation with is, you know, possible outcomes that you'd like to see. You know, what are what are the things that that you're hoping will come out of this conversation? Because um, that'll help guide uh, sort of where the line of questioning and, and conversation goes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it can be as simple as I just don't want you to be miserable at work. Uh huh. Yeah, I just don't want you to. You, you, yeah, yeah. It's my perception that that that. Yeah, you're frustrated. You're not happy. And I don't want that for any of my team members. And so, yeah, can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah, great. Um, there, there's probably one final level of the spectrum here, which is you know we we haven't really gone to this uh, level yet, but um, consequences. You know uh, that that there's you know a. Uh, I don't, I don't know what it would be, you know, is it, is it, uh, you know, time off work? Is it, uh, is it all the way to a firing? I mean, sure. You know, these are, these are all outcomes that are possible because somebody's behavior uh, is, is not where it's uh, expectations are supposed to be for that role. Um, so we could talk about that. And I guess I just want to say that out loud because obviously uh, you and the leadership team above you should be in agreement on what that looks like. You know, hopefully you have a, a policy handbook, you have, you know, you have some guidelines uh, for, for how this kind of a conversation uh, plays out. Um, but uh, that would, you know, that would be sort of the final level, but only, only if you actually had that agreement with the folks above you that 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 was an appropriate outcome. I say that out loud because so many of our clients, Mike, are are not just small businesses, but family owned businesses. And this is a something that really needs to be thought through. What are we actually allowing here in terms of behavior? What kind of a culture are we allowing to come into existence because we excuse behavior here because we're just so loyal to our people? Just want to say that out loud. Oh yeah, well, and there's the the a range of responses before uh, yeah we get to uh, you know if necessary a separation. Absolutely. And, and so yeah, yeah, it could be everything from and, and back to our questions. All right, so what do you need in order to 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 reset? Yep. What do you need in order to get back in a positive state of mind? Yep. Well, I need to have a conversation with so and so. All right, would you like me to mediate that, or can, is that something you can do on your own? Right. No, I can do it on my own. All right. So to to yeah, I just need to take the afternoon off or I need to whatever it might be. And so so yeah, there's a scale of things that we can do and being open to the possibilities and being open to oftentimes that person either has already thought about, okay, here's what I here's what I really need in order to reset, or they're completely out of ideas. Yep. Have no idea what they need to do, and they're looking for you to brainstorm with. All right, so let's talk about a few things we could do. Right. right. Ideally, they they offer some, and you offer some, and we figure out the one that, that that would be that next step. All right, you you have nicely walked us into the conclusion of this episode because we we really wanted to come back to the concept of the fact that you used to be a peer, and now you're managing your former peers, and uh, that is an uncomfortable place to be. I was just thinking as you said what you said, you know, let me brainstorm with you. What if you as the manager in training don't have a clue what is supposed to happen next? You have no ideas for how to help this person. Because like we said, what got you here won't get you there. Maybe you don't have the skill set yet and you haven't really thought through um, what that's going to be. Um, that, it, this is an insecure place for somebody who's a manager in training to be. We, we talk about um, the, uh, uh, oh, it's hilarious that my mind went blank just as I said it. The imposter syndrome. I suddenly had imposter syndrome when I couldn't come up with the term imposter syndrome. It's like, do I even know what I'm talking about? You've reinforced um, your imposter syndrome. <laughs> it was perfect. How weird. <laughs> uh, but the imposter syndrome of, you know, man, I shouldn't be, be in this role. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, maybe none of us know what we're doing, right? But But we've got roles to play. And you do have a skill set that's brought you to the role. There is a reason you're in that chair and you were selected for that chair. Um, so so just, just knowing that the fact that you don't know the answer doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that, that uh, you're not supposed to be in that chair, right? Um, that's, a, I, I think, a, a freeing way to look at this. Um, but you had a really interesting point, Mike, about 
um, you know, the fact that these people know me, you know, I'm their manager, but they know me. There is a bad side to that, but there's a good side to it too. So why don't you walk us through that sort of the, the double-edged sword here of, uh, of, of the fact that you're managing people who really know you and you know them. Yeah, so you work side by side with these folks. And so uh, you do probably in all likelihood know their, their hopes, their dreams, their, the, you know, what they want to achieve personally, professionally, what, what's uh, their why, what's their motivations, things like that. Uh, so you've probably got some insight into them. If you were, if you were taken and put them in, into a leadership role uh, for a brand new team of people, one of the first things you would want to do is and things that we encourage our clients to do is sit down each one of them individually and discover. Yeah. Right. What does what does money mean to you? What motivates you? What's uh, what's the uh, what's the the top three priorities in your life? Where do you see yourself in a year, two years, three years from now? Uh, right. So we would have all these conversations about their their personal career goals, life goals, and things like that. Yeah. The, the other thing that we would do if we were dropped into a brand new team is we would ask them, all right, so what do you like most about working here? What do you like least? What, if you had a magic wand and could change one thing about this department, what would you change? And we would gather all that from our new team. The beauty of coming from an existing team and being promoted within the team is you've already had probably most of those conversations around mm. the water cooler. Right, we've stood around and said, "Yeah, you know, this place, yeah, you know, what it needs is, you know, we've we've had all those conversations, and all of a sudden, you have the mo the day you take the job, you already have tremendous insight into what are the the obstacles and frustrations that's keeping this team from being the highest performing team that it could be. Uh, so you show up, you knowing your people and, and knowing what's uh, what, what's getting in the way uh, of of us being the best that we could be. Love that." love that i that probably is the, the the place to end this conversation is notice notice what we're doing here in every solution that we're suggesting this is about communication and having a conversation with uh, human beings it really is going to boil down to a human being talking to a human being and opening up a little bit on both sides to come to a, an agreement because you are partners you are you are, you are now their manager, but you are still partners. There is still baton handoffs that have to happen within that team uh, to, to make this work. And the best way to do that is when you really actually know each other. Uh, so the, the more you do that, uh, the, the better it gets. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think one caution here, uh, maybe it's a Midwestern thing, but, but the, we sometimes tend to avoid the person who, who we perceive to be angry, frustrated, mm -hmm. uh, mad, you know, scared, whatever it might be, it, right. because it's uncomfortable. And we're like, you know, we shy away from it, but yeah. it's, it's the leader's job, right? The team members can shy away from that person. It's the leader's job is to lean in. Go there. Right. Yeah, you got to go towards, uh, you know, the issue and, and towards the person who's struggling. And, and that, is, that is your job. And That's so right. when, you, when you're looking around thinking, well, he's mad, who should talk to him? It's you. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there's no one else. It's, it's, it's you. And then uh, for those of you who have stayed or so stuck around this long, let, let's offer this final nugget. The uh, simply be the leader that you wish you had yeah. had when you held that position. So when you Love were, it. when you were, uh, you know, a frontline nurse, yeah. And you get promoted to, you know, floor nurse, mm -hmm. right? Be the floor nurse that you wish you had had when you were a nurse. That's right. Yeah. That's if you're right. a salesperson, be the sales manager that I wish I had had when I was selling cars. And just that little, that little prompt yeah. will, will, will tell you what you need to do next. Uh, you know, what do Couldn't I agree need? more. Yeah. You know, what do I need to do? What would I have wished my boss had done? Or maybe they did do uh, mm -hmm. that. That was helpful to me uh, when I was in the exact same position. I tell you, we are going. We've referenced probably five or six of our podcast episodes here, Mike, and uh, I'm going to make sure that we uh, post those in the show notes. Uh, but we did a whole episode on that concept, on that one question. Um, I, I think this is where we put a pin in it. Um, so hopefully, uh, dear listeners. This has helped you uh, for the folk uh, that sent in the prompt. Uh, we're, we're thankful that you're listening and hope this has uh, helped your specific situation and 
uh, our thoughts and prayers with all of you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Tiny Tim. That's good stuff. Let's see what Mr. Wolf has to say right. about us. So go ahead and tweet that or share it any other way you want. As always, there are no rights reserved, no trademarks, no copyrights. Share it if you want to. And join us next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius. That's good enough. <laughs>